We heard that you have performed meditation in a mosque. What are the differences between meditation and prayer? And how did you feel? How was your life in regards to faith? What did you believe in? When did you first hear about Islam? I tried many other type of spirituality like Reiki, shamanism. I tried to get interested in all type of religion. I was talking to God while walking and I was asking him to, you know, to manifest himself in my life. I wanted to find him. I felt so bad because I just walked 1,000 kilometers and I, I thought I was becoming more holy. I was becoming more holy. And uh, suddenly the azan started to play and I was like, wow, this is powerful, this is amazing, you know? I loved it. But I thought it's not a religion for me, so good for them, but I thought it was a religion for Arabs. I thought it was a religion for Arabs. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Julian. Thank you for accepting our invitation. We are happy to have you with us. I want to start with who is Julian Drolon? Can you tell us briefly about yourself? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Ahmed and the whole team of Towards Eternity, thank you for inviting me. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm from France. I'm 40 years old. It just happened that I've been searching for God all my life. I wanted to become a priest when I was young. I was born in a Catholic family. All my life I've been trying to find God in many different types of experiences. Then slowly, you know, I started to discover about Islam. How was your life in regards to faith? What did you believe in? I was a Christian because my family baptized me when I was two years old. And then I, at some point, thought I should become a monk because I really like religion. I thought it, it gave sense to my life, even as a kid. But then after my family didn't really encourage me so much to pursue that, they more encouraged me to become a Buddhist or at least a, like a Buddhist. So I started to practice meditation and it really helped me to calm me down and things like that. And then I tried many other type of spirituality like Reiki, which is a type of healing, a shamanism. I tried to get interested in all type of religion. What was the thing that made you question your beliefs? Was it an event or a thought and when was it? So there was a time I was a singer for a couple of years uh, in the Philippines. It was a dream of mine. And I remember very well, I was in Hong Kong. I just finished a gig, a concert in a festival, and I played in front of my favorite singer. I met him and he came to my concert, so I felt very humbled. And I was thinking there must be something is not right in my life. I didn't know what it is, but I thought I'm not upon the truth. Suddenly something made me realize I have a good life and everything, but there's something missing in my life. I know I don't live my life the right way could not say what it was. So that was the trigger and I decided to walk 1,000 kilometers from the border of Spain towards the west coast of Spain and it was 1,000 kilometer journey. It took me 30 days. It was a great experience because I started to try to reflect about God. I met a lot of Christians along the way so I think that was a big event because I was talking to God while walking and I was asking him to you know to manifest himself in my life. I wanted to find him and I believe that walking was part of the process. So at the end of your journey, how did you feel? Could you find God really? Sadly, after walking 1,000 kilometers, I really remember very well. So you expect to be a bit more pure and holy, right? And so I just arrived in Santiago de Compostela. I attended the ceremony. And there was a Brazilian guy who came towards my way in a bicycle and he, he kind of like scared me. And I told him an insult in Brazilian. And he also replied to me something bad. Then I felt so bad because I just walked 1,000 kilometers. I thought I was becoming more holy. So after this event, I realized uh, it's not enough to walk. You need to walk with something that is giving you the guidance to not hurt other people's feelings. When did you first hear about Islam? The real time I think I really heard about Islam is with 9-11, when actually I started to pay attention to Islam. So the first person that told me about Islam very openly, and the first person I remember is a taxi driver when I was in Abu Dhabi. I had to wait for a flight to catch to the Philippines. I had six hours to kill. And I thought I should not stay in the airport. I'd rather check the landscape and this. I didn't know about Abu Dhabi. So I asked the taxi driver, what can I visit here? And he said, this big white masjid, huge masjid. So I said, let's go. And on the way to this masjid, uh, he started to play the radio. And there was this sound that I really loved. And this music really loved in my ear. And I said, uh, what is this music? It talks to my heart. I told him that. And he stopped the car and he said, brother, this is not music, it's the Quran. And he started to preach me about Islam. He said, you know, I really hope you can become Muslim, you and your family, and save your 
yourself from the hellfire. And I told him, hold on a minute, you know, nobody's going to go to hellfire. What is this? So that was the beginning of the journey where for the first time of my life, a Muslim engaged me in a very nice way, actually. What was the thing that affected you the most before you became Muslim? I think what affected me the most before I became Muslim is to live in the south part of the world because I'm from the north, I'm from France. My DNA, my, my race come from the north, but if you look at the map, you cut it in two, 90% of the Muslim world is in the south. You have Africa, Middle East, you have Southeast Asia, India, Pakistan, it's all in the south. So I, because of my work, I travel in all these countries. I lived in all these countries. So I was in, in the heart of the world and the Azan was going on in most of the countries that I visited and it always made an impact on me. Like I remember one day I was playing soccer in Tanzania with some Africans and suddenly the Azan started to play and I was like, wow, this is powerful. This is amazing, you know, I loved it. Then I went to Cyprus, same. The Azan was playing in Nicosia and it impacted me. Like I felt pulled, but I thought, It's not a religion for me, so good for them, but I thought it was a religion for Arabs. How were you convinced that Islam is 100% true? There are two reasons why I believe that Islam was 100% true. One is just a fact, because the Quran is the word of God, and I realized that. And I never knew that actually a lot of things that has been said in the Quran has been discovered only now, or a few decades ago. I could not believe that. I Actually, the Quran proved itself to me that it can only be the word of God. It can only come from God and not the Prophet Muhammad. But one is because by experience. I experienced some miracles, so I'm going to share one with you. So I was searching about God and I was praying to God. And as I was making that prayer, as a Christian still, uh, there were some words on YouTube about one ayat about the Quran in uh, about the rain. And at the same time, I was reading that ayat start to rain in front of my window for 10 seconds, really literally. Like just like but really only in front of my window not everywhere I was living on the 30th floor when I saw that and that ayat I understood Allah gave me the answer I wanted and I started to cry I was like uh, I felt so blessed you know that Allah cared to show me no brainer that's it you want an answer you want rain here you go you want sun Here you go. So you took your shahada right after this rain incident? I would say the defining moment of my conversion, it is the speech of Yusuf Estes, an American preacher that I had the chance to work with and meet after, that explained to a black brother on YouTube what is the difference between the Bible and the Quran. Why he's saying the Quran is the word of God and not the Bible. And he explained so well that after 30 minutes, I took my shahada. So how did you feel when you took your shahada? When I took my shahada, I felt like a billion dollars. I felt like if someone comes to me and say, look, you just became Muslim, right? Yes. I will put one billion in your bank account, but you have to say in front of everybody, you're not a Muslim. I will tell the people, sorry, I can't. I don't want this billion. I'm richer than that now. The truth is so expensive. How did your family and the people around you react to your conversion? I knew it's not going to be a good news for my family. Uh, I knew that it's not going to be so much appreciated, but I didn't care. When I told my mother I became Muslim, she said to me that was the worst thing I could tell her. But Alhamdulillah, she changed her mind because I think she realized that there are a lot of beautiful things in Islam. And she realized I became a better person. Islam makes you a better person. After becoming a Muslim, did you have difficulties in praying five times a day and fasting with other practices of Islam? Yes, yeah, so after becoming Muslim, it took me maybe a month to pray five times a day. A first, one, twice. And then slowly, and the hardest one is Fajr, the first prayer in the morning. But after I got into the rhythm and I never really gave up this practice, I, I always try to pray five times a day. We heard that you have performed meditation in a mosque. Yeah. What are the differences between meditation and prayer? And how did you feel? The main difference between meditation or Buddhist meditation and praying is that when you're meditating as a Buddhist, you try to empty your mind. But when you meditate as a Muslim, you try to do tadabbur. You try to reflect on life, on Allah. So it's, uh, I would say it's like, um, the difference is like, it's a more engaging way to meditate. It's a proactive way, which means you're not trying to empty your mind, but you're trying to fill up your mind with goodness and good thoughts towards Allah, towards your creator. And you try to reflect upon who you are, who is Allah, and try to connect. Whereas the Buddhist meditation is more about, in a way, when you're Buddhist, you try to empty your brain to let the truth comes out, you know? So it's a good methodology to do that, but then you have to fill it up with good things. There's no point to empty your brain to fill it up with alcohol again the next weekend or with other stuff. Did someone become Muslim after your shahada by your means? So a few 
people became Muslim after I become I took my shahada. The best story is my Japanese friend Koki. Uh, he's a brother I met uh, when I was 18 years old in Australia. We entered into a skin business together. He lost some money, and I told him, "Okay, you lost money. It's okay, but if you don't accept Islam, you're gonna lose much more." And he started to listen to me, and he came to Malaysia. He took his shahada, and we flew his wife, who was Filipina, non-Muslim at the time. We flew her over. She took her shahada, and they married in my house. Do you think you would be able to find Islam if you didn't travel that much? I think it's definitely much easier because of the life I had. I traveled in 50 countries. I speak four languages. So because of my traveling, it played a huge role. So when I go to Muslim countries, I realize those people are great people and they have a lot to offer to the world. And I realize the, the legacy of Islam is huge and I want to be part of his legacy. And speaking of this legacy, what kind of projects are you doing right now? So right now we are focusing with Alice Media, uh, the media production that I run on a very beautiful project about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is our second documentary film. It's called The Last Hope. And we're inviting 100 converts from 40 countries to uh, give us some interview to talk about what is the relation they have with the Prophet Sallallahu Like everybody has a different love for the Prophet. We love him for many reasons, for justice, for, you know, his manners, for his courage. So we want to have some intimate interviews to know how the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu impacted each convert in a different way. The legacy of the Prophet Sallallahu is so huge and there are so many to take from it. That's why we need many people, that's why we're inviting all the converts who are available to give the interviews and hopefully it's going to keep continuing and we hope that we can release the film in 2023, inshallah. And finally, what would you like to add as your final comments? We're about to go through difficult times. There are rumors of wars, rumors of new disease, rumors of this and that, and I just want to tell the people don't lose hope. That's why we called our new documentary The Last Hope, The Last Hope being the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Do not worry, we are all the Ummah of the Prophet. We all belong to his Ummah and things are going to be fine. Even though we're going to go through tribulations, we should always be optimistic, we should always be positive because we have the best Prophet of the entire world. He's the best, he's the most beloved of Allah.